minute late today, about a minute late, which isn't terrible for a five o'clock start. Five o'clock starts are always a little bit dicey, but let me uh, see if I can find this broadcast on the iPad. I was just watching a little bit of Brief Fit Dance, a little bit of Brianna's live stream. So, and then the Stevester called me and pointed out that my <laughs> broadcast was scheduled for 11 a.m. When I set this one, I, I accidentally didn't set the correct time for a start time. So that probably misled some folks. And speaking of Steve, he, he's probably going to Skype into the show. And Durr's in the house. We are live. Yes, we are. And uh, sorry about that schedule time snafu. For some reason, I set this event and scheduled it for 11 a.m. That wasn't going to happen. So uh, Carlos is in the house from Panama. And today we're going to talk about heavy use watches. This is part two. This is a continuation of extreme use heavy duty watches and of course I've got my 231 stunner which is the epitome of a heavy use watch made out of extremely robust grade 5 titanium a special alloy of grade 5 titanium that Grand Seiko uses <clears throat> and of course with the versatility of the adjustment on the fly adjustment on wrist and uh, other functionality that this watch has it makes it a, a good a use case a good watch for the heavy use situations <clears throat> and talk to us about sunglasses sunglasses I actually have a video on the channel of uh, Ray-Ban sunglasses uh, several pairs of Ray-Ban sunglasses that I wore over the years these days I have a pair of prescription sunglasses unfortunately uh, gotten to that point it's a fairly mild prescription. My distance vision is still pretty good, but I do have a mild prescription for for driving, so I have some sunglasses in the car for that. And the 2-3 runs trying to have use of robust, it says Blue, Mighty Rat in the House, welcome from Canada. David Williams is coming in from Canada. That's amazing. Just finished a barbecue for lunch, Carlos. And uh, let's see, how scratch resistant is it? Mine is holding up really well. This titanium is holding up really well. It, it's, um, it's much more durable from the standpoint of scratches than stainless steel. Like, for example, the Rolex with the 901, that scratches very easily. Uh, this holds up much better than any stainless steel. It will still get scratches. I mean, anything will, but this holds up much better. The clasp, which is stainless steel, this clasp, it has a lot of scratches on it. I mean, it's scratched like no tomorrow. But the watch is holding up really well. Uh, let's see. Tim says, also from Canada. <clears throat> now, keep in mind grade 2 titanium, that duller looking titanium that a lot, a lot of manufacturers use for watches, that is very soft and that will scratch pretty easily. But this is pretty tough stuff. Pretty tough stuff. Let's get a close up look on that thing. pretty robust to say the least speaking of robust I'm wearing my last this is a Willison Geiger safari shirt this is uh, Egyptian cotton these were made back in the day by Willison Geiger they are extremely hard to find if you can find one of these in really good condition and this one's been worn a fair amount it's held up really well but if you can find one in exceptional condition get it. They are very hard to find. Willis and Geiger's the manufacturers made in the United States of America. And um, it's a goodie. It's a goodie. High quality safari shirts are hard to come by. Most of them are pretty much junk. Uh, so, and again I have the ones from, uh, there's, there's a picture of the one I was wearing the other day from uh, a Banana Republic when they were based out of San Francisco when it was a couple working out of San Francisco they had some pretty nice Egyptian cotton 
safari shirts. Not quite as good as this one, not quite as heavy, the material, not quite as good as the ones from Willis and Geiger. Th these are the best. I had several, and this is the last one that survives to this day from the late 70s was when I bought several of them. I still have a um, safari jacket that was made by Willis and Geiger. I still have that, and it's in good shape, you know, serviceable shape. And it's also Egyptian cotton, but it's a safari jacket. Uh, let's see, David, when things were normal, have you gone around all the watch shops in Las Vegas? One place has Grand Seiko in Venetian. Yeah, I think he's been to all those places. GS has gone up in value. I should have bought your Snowflake. Didn't you sell it for like 3200 No, no, no. I sold it for, I think, 4700 No, I wouldn't. I would have never sold it for 3200 That's not, that wouldn't have happened. I'd still have it. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I'm not a giveaway artist. So, no shirt, no shoes here. Carlos. Um, okay, so there's a quick look at the 005 Stunner. Now there's one you can buy for 3200. I'd sell you that one for 3200. Shipped. There you go. That's a deal. You got a deal going on right here, right, right here, right now. Sell it to you. Shipped. Uh, let's see. I don't think I've ever seen a snow snake, a snowflake sell for that little. Yeah, that would have been that'd be a real deal. That would be a deal. Uh, let me think. What else? Um. Oh, the lovely Brianna was on earlier. She did a live stream. She had a few little issues with the audio, but then she got everything working. I suggested she reboot the computer, and she got her um, Rode Wireless Go mic system working, uh, which was good. So she's making progress on her live streams. And she was also hooked up with a um, Cat5 cable to the Internet, so that helps. That's always a good thing. Let's see. David, when things were... N oh, okay, we already answered that. Um, boo, yes, know that shop. Hor Horologic Horologico. I'm not sure what that is. A great salesperson named Mary Jo. Uh, Craig sent you an email with a quick video clip. Wow. Let's see, sub 16K GMT Pepsi, count up from 12 to 13. I uh, lie in wait. Oh, sub 16,000. What's the lowest price one you're seeing so far for sale? Hey, Craig, go to the Rolex store, LOL. It's closed. Oh, you mean the website? You mean the website? We'll do it if you want to. I'll go to the website if you want to. Yeah, okay, she corrected. She said website. I like finding vintage Rolex deals. Um, do you think the LE hobnail dials on the divers are worth the premium? Maybe somebody will answer that. All right, let's see. Let's see if we can pull up the website real quick before the Stevester calls in. Give me a second here. I'm going to Rolex.com. That should work, right? Whoa, look at that. Look at that. Look what they've got on the home page. Can you imagine that? And can you imagine these people, these people buying, <laughs> spending gold sub, gold day date money on Daytonas? Can you imagine when they could buy a day date now? Maybe they couldn't buy a date date new. I think aren't Daytona's around twenty five grand, so you'd probably have to get a used date date. But still, you could get a nice used date date for twenty five grand any day of the week, and I would much rather have that than a uh, than a Daytona any day. Okay, Leslie in the house. What do you want us to bring up? We're on the website. What do you want us to bring up? Let's see. Mighty Rat says 15209 is the lowest I've seen so far. Uh, okay. Hang in there. They'll come down. Lou, if you are, are here again and visit the shop, 
ask for her and mention that I referred to you simply helps as a point of reference from a local. There you go. Derek in the house. Craig said he would go to the Rolex AD as soon as they open with Bree. Yep, absolutely. We'll, we'll go. I'm game. I mean, you're going to have to convince Bree to go, but I think she said she would go. It would be fun. Uh, let's see. What should we do here on this menu? Uh, how do I... Oops. This Rolex is... This website is a little bit funky. Um... Okay, let's go to Datejust. Give me a second here. We'll go to try to get the Datejust. Okay, so here's the Datejust. Because I think that would be a good bet for, for Leslie. I think a Datejust. Uh, let's see here. Oh, that's funky the way they've got the time moving like that. I don't know what that's about. Okay, so let's see here. Datejust 31. There you go. I think that would be ideal for Leslie. Yeah, I think that'd be something, a little bit of pop to it. Something with a little bit of pop to it to hang out. Uh, yeah. Uh, did they call those Lady Date these days? Uh, date Just 31. I guess they just call it a Date Just 31. And that's got the President bracelet on it. So there you go. Absolutely, positively. Uh, let's see. Derek says, and get the day date. No, that's not what I said. <laughs> no, I, I said that I'm probably not going to go back to a day date. I think you're, you're getting confused. You're getting a little bit confused. Let's see. David, thanks. I uh, look forward to heading out there again. Rolex and GS both need new websites. Kyle's in the house. The Mighty Route. Just been watching Ocean's 12. Brad Pitt wearing a white gold slash platinum day date. Best feature of the film. Well, which was it? Was it white gold or platinum? we got to know these details. Come on. Give us the details. Uh, green and gold go well together. Durr. Yeah, just about anything goes good with 18 karat gold. <laughs> also, black, blue, you know, you name it. Uh, <laughs> especially green and rose gold. No, no, I would pass on the rose gold. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't go rose gold. That'd be a no-fly zone for me. You can't beat yellow gold, 18 karat yellow gold. I mean, that's just stunning. I mean, why would you want to change that? Why would you want to change perfection? Let's see here. Um, she likes. She likes R G. What's R G? Oh, rose gold? No, no. Pass on that. Pass on the rose gold, folks. We got to do a little intervention from time to time on this channel. You know, we got to get people going in the right direction. Sometimes people get get a little off kilter, and we need to try to get them back back in the in the right direction. And R. Wag says, hi, Chip, all, and all the Wrench Gang, happy Saturday. There you go, R. Wags. So, R. Wags, what do you think? Um, do you think that BlockFi is going to survive this financial downturn and everything that's going on? Do you think that BlockFi, uh, that those folks are on solid ground? What, what, what is your best guess on the folks at BlockFi? asking for a friend <laughs> uh, do you have a favorite of the GS4 se seasons lineup I would get I think two of them are are, uh, are titanium so I think I would go with ti the titanium ones yep that'd probably be my first choice blues in the house he says hi to our wags and Derek Carlos get her the lady president would never would never vote uh, would would never vote in a woman though for what it's worth. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Um, I think rose gold and green look good together, but if and when I ever buy gold, it's going to be yellow gold. Absolutely, yellow gold is the way to go. Nick's in the house. Uh, any has or can find a used GS spring drive diver anywhere for sale. Yes, they are for sale from time to time. You'll see them on uh, eBay. 
But you know, they, they, they command pretty decent prices. It's almost worth it to buy one new from somebody like Steve at Little Treasury Jewelers. Uh, the link is in the description because he'll give you a good deal. And, you know, you're not going to spend that much more than buying one used. I mean, it's almost not worth it. You're almost better off just getting one with the box and papers with your name on it. And, and there's no risk that way. You don't have to worry about, you know, being scammed. Um, Tim, hey, Craig, what do you think about my first Rolex? Sent you an email with pictures. Okay, let's go to the email. I think we've got a couple of emails. Uh, oh, 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 before we go to that, let's show the Omega Stunner again from yesterday. There's the Omega Stunner. Oh, Steve's calling in. Let me answer this. Let me answer this. The Stevester. The Stevester is calling in. Now, hold on, Steve. Let me let me get this, get you full screen, and get my headset on. Uh, let's see here. Okay, we got we got Steve on the screen. Let me get my headset so that I'll be able to hear him. Okay, so make sure you've got um, the show stopped on your end. Make sure it's not playing. Can you hear me? Testing one, two. Can you hear me, Steve? Can you hear me? Steve, can you hear me? Uh, I'm not hearing you. Let me okay, make sure you got Skype there. so you can hear Skype because I would be coming through Skype. So make sure you got uh, Skype, setting, my friend. Skype set up so you can hear me on Skype. And then once he gets that set up, we'll be good to go. Hey, Craig, uh, okay. I will look at the email after this call. Just remind me after this call. Carlos says she is between the rose gold lady president 31 mil and a Patek Aquanaut lady. Yeah, forget on forget the Patek. Go with the Rolex. That's not a hard decision. And Nick's in the house. Uh, uh, just okay. Carlos says just she sorry. is between the. Okay, Rose I'm getting it uh, feeding back. I'm getting me feeding back. Steve, that's not a hard decision. And Nick's in the house. You've got the you've got the show feeding back. You want to kill the show. Getting it feeding back. You want to kill the show on your end, Steve. Kill the show and just listen to me through Skype. Can you hear me? Testing, can you hear me? Some reason my headphones not. Yeah, because uh, he's having trouble hearing me. So we'll we'll cut back to Steve when he gets that sorted out, gets Skype working properly, so that he can hear me through Skype. Okay, let's see here. Nick Zhang, uh, just buy one, a new one from Steve, and you'll get a great deal. Absolutely. And R Wag says hi, Carlos in blue. Forty-five degrees here. Carlos in northern Indiana. Well, okay. Nick, I see them on the Rolex forum pretty frequently. I thought Cl I, I thought Clive was Skyping in. Derek and the... No, nah, he doesn't like to use Skype. Uh, let's see. They stole $160 million in the first film. So let's assume the date date is platinum. Mighty rat. You should be able to tell by the dial that's on it. Uh, Durr's in the house. Anyone who buys used before calling Steve for a GS is a fool <laughs> laughing out loud uh, blue says Steve star coming in the house Carlos go for day date rose rose gold N not a Patek unless you want his hers Patek no 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 go go Rolex Absolutely go Rolex, but don't go rose gold. Go yellow gold, folks. What, what's, uh, what's with this rose gold thing? Rose gold's not the way to go. No, 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 no. Okay, our wags is in the house. We need to kidnap Craig and do a Rolex Day 8 intervention. There you go. Our wags, I would not mind a bit uh, collier time for a short, I don't, I'm not sure what that is. And, we're, and uh, Steve is trying to figure out, trying to sort out his audio situation on his end. Uh, Durr says, can you hear me now? <laughs> can you hear me now? <laughs> can you hear me now? How about now? Our wag's in the house. Date 836 is, is, is big for her. Hello, all. Uh, Kyle says, hi, Steve. I'm loving the SB 
GX261. What a great watch for the price. Thanks again, Kyle Jett. Unfortunately, I don't know if Steve can hear us. Uh, hopefully, he can hear all these. Uh, Kyle all these, says, hi, Steve. All I'm these all accolades. Yes. I'm going to hop off for a sec. Uh, GX261. Okay. What a great watch for the price. Okay. Thanks again, yeah. Kyle Jett. Unfortunately, I don't okay, know. Okay, so, so he's having technical Steve is having technical difficulties, so hopefully he will call back. I'm going to take these off in the meantime because they're not that comfortable. I don't know if it's just me, but I don't like wearing headphones. Some people wear them for hours and hours and love it, right? And I don't know what the deal is with that either. Uh, let's see. Uh, hi, David Williams. Uh, Viva Las Vegas. Uh, the GS website doesn't do justice at all. The pictures are terrible on the GS website. Yeah, they're not even like pictures. They're almost like drawings or something. I, I, I don't know what... Why would you do that? Why would you not have like stunning photographs of your watches on the website? I don't get that. Uh, Wags. But here's the silver lining to all this. The, the silver lining to their marginal marketing efforts is that we're able to get the watches. Imagine if they were really good at marketing. We wouldn't, we wouldn't, we'd have to line up. You know, it'd be worse than Rolex waiting lists. I mean, because the supply is so short, right? I mean, we just literally wouldn't be able to get watches. So we, we should thank our lucky stars that they're generally clueless. And so we can at least get watches. Now, the 002 notwithstanding. So it says, clearly Steve has no juice to get the 002. Can he get the SBGW258? And Craig, do you like that model? No, I'd rather have the 002. We talked about the 258. I'd rather have the 002 and keep my fingers crossed. He did talk to Grand Seiko a few days ago, and hopefully they're going to get him one this month. Things are delayed because of the situation. Fix this door. Um, things are delayed because of the situation, but... Uh, they have told him that they're going to try their best to get him one this month, sometime in April. So I'm, I'm a patient man. I can wait. We'll see what happens. I'd rather wait than compromise and, get, and not get the watch that I, that I want. So um, that's how that works. Did Seiko release new SARB models? That's a good question. When he comes in, Kyle, uh, when Steve comes in, we can ask him that. Hopefully, he'll, he'll call back in. Uh, Craig sent a wrist roll vid of my 229 in your email. Okay, what's the cost of the new Day Date 36? We never saw that on the site. I think that, that they're around 33000 or something. I think that... I think uh, Dudley paid... For his day date forty, I think he paid twenty eight fifty after a discount. So that this gives you kind of a price range. Okay, let's see here. Um, well, I see Mighty Rats email here. Uh, now this is a good looking piece. Absolutely. Absolutely a good looking piece no doubt yeah that's a stunner I like that and that's a very versatile piece very versatile piece I would probably prefer the white dial myself but that's also nice and I think the blue dial one's nice but the gray I mean there's something to be said for the gray and I personally would go for the Jubilee bracelet with a uh, white gold fluted bezel myself but anyway that is pretty cool all right so let's see what else we've got in the emails okay here we go now here's the um, 229 now let's see if I can play this video oh I got to download it hmm I've got to download the video to the desktop IMG file okay I will do that I will do that. Let's see if we can play this puppy. And this be it. Give me a moment here. Open with. Okay. I need an assistant. I need a production assistant to help with this. 
Okay, stand by. Stand by for the wrist roll. Stand by, folks. I'm going to play it. All right, here we go. Oh, look at that. Yeah, talk about some pizzas. Look at those pizzas. Wow. That's some good stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. But we do have to... Uh, we do have to get you stepped up. By the way, here's the uh, 18238, folks. There's the 18238 Stunner that I wore for almost 20 years. For, for 19 years, I wore that particular piece on and off. Towards the end there, I was wearing it a lot less. But, yeah, that's that one. And uh, let's see. Where's my... Yeah, okay. So let's go back to the mail here. I think we had another email. I think we had another one. And here is a vintage Rolex fine. Found it in the pawn shop. Let's pull this picture up. Not bad. Not bad. A little day chest. Let's see if there's another picture. Okay, there you go on a leather strap. Yeah, there you go. Absolutely. An older date just. You can get a deal on some date just sometimes, folks. Not a bad move. All these people paying too much money for sports Rolexes when they can buy a date just. That's actually a better solution for most people. A better everyday watch. Uh, let's see here. Um... Uh, Craig uh, beat me to it. I'm going for the white Jubilee as well. I have a cunning plan. <laughs> okay. I think that looks like Brett PG day chest. Okay. Not bad. A day chest, but got to go fluted bezel on Jubilee. Yes. Uh, back to school. Bree. Oh, Bree says, uh, go back to school next week, so there's that. Okay, there you go. But you're going to do it remotely, so you'll be able to still get a lot of work done. Kyle's in the house. I think that, okay. Uh, okay, and I read that, Greg. Great, great watch. Okay, brief it dense. Haha, here in Canada, we're not going back till next year. Tim in the house. Well, she's not going back physically for a while. She's going back virtually. Our wags in the house. Everything I know about BlockFi sounds fine. It's a privately held company, so public information on company financial statements are non-existent. The leadership has decades of experience in finance. Our wags in the house. When I look at my 033, sometimes I think I'm crazy purchasing more expensive watches. Interesting point. And Bree says, oh, yes, I go back to school on Tuesday, a GS diver looks good. Kyle in the house. Carlos, which is the 033? Carlos says SARB033. Kyle's in the house. Well, that 18238 was the greatest. So trim and nice. Kyle Jett in the house. Uh, yeah, I don't buy junk watches. <laughs> I, you know, I buy nice pieces. Yeah, that's what I do. Life's too short. To, to not buy nice pieces. I've stepped up these days to Grand Seiko, but Rolex is still a good piece, but it's just a, not quite at the level of Grand Seiko. Let's see, Peter, uh, still alive and kicking from the Netherlands. How are you guys doing these days? We're doing okay. Carlos, oh no, believe me, you're not crazy for buying better watches. LOL. And Tim, I paid 1800 USD for that day just I left the pawn shop laughing. There you go. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Uh, Carlos in the house. Uh, Steve had a nice date just for like $2,200. He was retailing it for $2,200, and it was a nice piece. So you can get some deals on date just if you, if you look around. Uh, Carlos stays very short. Uh, that thinking stays very short time, to be honest. I'm not sure what that means. Um, Durr in the house. Tim, yes, that date chest was probably built in China. 
They were probably laughing when you walked out the door, too. Ha, 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 uh-oh. There you go. Kevin D. Sold my, my date chest. Bought an SARB033 and one Bitcoin a year and a half ago. Looking to purchase a GS. There you go, Kevin D. in the house. Uh, the Mighty Rat agreed, Carlos, Kyle, uh, this black dials are nice. Okay. Probably the best fake because it fooled the Rolex AD. Ha ha, there you go. All right. And Tim says, yes, that's a great deal. Good find. The SARB035 is great too. In fact, I think I would prefer it. Got a lot of discussion going on here, folks. A lot of discussion. Let me see what else is going on in here. And uh, and Bree, let us know if you're going to call in. Uh, I don't know if Steve is going to try to call back in or not. Uh, so if you want to uh, Skype in and, and say hi to the folks, you're more than welcome. And we can, we can also talk about your setup a little bit if you're still hanging around in the chat. I don't know if you're still hanging around or not. Let's do a quick time check on the 005. There it is. The 005. That can be also another heavy use watch. They can take a lot of abuse. And speaking of abuse, folks, speaking of abuse, somebody says, I want to be in motion with Brianna. Absolutely. That's the way to be. Um... Deleted by David. That wasn't too bad. That that wasn't too bad. I'll I'll go ahead and let that one stand. That that's not too too vile. Um, let me see. Uh, message deleted. Okay. So if I click on view message, um, how do I? Well, anyway, it was on the edge. It wasn't too bad. Uh, let's see. Okay. So. Um, <clears throat> Let's see, am I still in the chat? I don't see slot anymore. Peter, yes, I see you in the slot, and the, you are in the, the chat. Okay, so the I have a question about the, uh, the James Bond, the Omega, the original James Bond Omega, and that quartz movement. I, I have a question about how robust that is. So let me go to my watch list. I've got one on the in the watch list right now that is uh they're bidding it up. It's up to nine hundred and forty two dollars right now. Okay. And here it is. And uh looks like a pretty decent watch. Looks like it's in pretty decent shape. And maybe some of you, you folks can can chime in. And let me know how robust is that quartz movement. I know the quartz movement, a 9F quartz movement, Grand Seiko quartz movement is extremely robust. I'm guessing that movement in that Omega is not junk either. I mean, are they, are they known for being pretty robust or do they have any Achilles heels? Let us know in the chat what you think about that because that could be a heavy use watch that, that's relatively affordable. Let's see, Mighty Rat, the Jubilee and Oyster Bracelets are interchangeable for the date, ju date just 126300 for watches for the, uh, four watches for the price of two. There you go. Uh, Dave, Dave laid the s smack down quick. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. I made it, I made it to, I made it to today's show. Kevin's in the house. Good morning, folks. Kevin is in the house. I guess it froze. Uh-oh. Well, it looks like the live stream is still going on this end. Let me know. Let me know, folks, if everything is still going. Kyle says, I own a super fake that I bought in Thailand. It's a ceramic Hulk and would fool anyone. I would be super scared buying Rolex used. The fakes have infiltrated the market. Kyle in the house. And Carlos, nice, nice Omega, uh, hopped out of the shower and find some Craig Ship live stream awaiting me. There you go. Triforce Rich is in the house. Finished working out, uh, not trying to be a pre-existing condition. Hey, Craig, 
I have one. Uh, it's not as accurate as 9F by a mile, but it's robust. Okay. Um, and Dur says, my James Bond Omega Seamaster Quartz is a tank, extremely robust, and keeps great time. Years of battery life. Got mine for 1195 three years ago, and I'll never get rid of it. Craig, yes, it's it's going. Okay. And uh, let, let me think. Um, oh, pre-existing conditions. I saw this thing. You guys probably saw it. It was going around all over the place. About this 30-year-old teacher slash coach, et cetera, et cetera, that he died of the virus, and they interviewed his wife and everything, and attractive young lady, and, um, you know, they're talking about, here's this healthy guy, you know, with no pre-existing conditions, and, and, and the virus got him, uh, but I hate to break the news. The photos that I saw, it looked like to me he was significantly overweight. Didn't look like to me like he was, you know, in... in good shape being overweight is a pre-existing condition folks so you know you don't have to have heart disease you don't have to have you know all these other things if if you're just you know significantly overweight it, that can be a pre-existing condition he looked to me in the pictures that i saw it looked like to me like he was probably a good 40 pounds overweight so that could have been it that could have been what did him in so folks this is serious business. You got to start taking care of yourselves. There has to be some personal responsibility. You know, these folks that just go and eat all the fast food all the time and everything and just laugh about it. And I had a buddy that used to laugh about that stuff, right? And then he got diabetes and they cut off his foot and then they cut his leg off below his knee. And then, you know, they had to take the whole thing off. You know, and then it, it just downhill from there. He went blind, everything. I mean, he just fell apart. And it, it, it can be a mess. It can be a mess if you don't take good care of yourself. Don't put poison in your body, folks. Try not to put poison in your body. Uh, let's see. Um, try selling it on Australian buy-sell trade. <laughs> uh, these older Seamasters are great. I, I still have one. It's the automatic bond watch with chro chroma chromometer on the dial okay but I think the auto ones are a little bit thicker right that's the only thing about that Kyle says lol I'm sure one of horology house customers would be all over it um, they say uh, diabetics are vulnerable absolutely they that would be a pre-existing condition high blood pressure would be a pre-existing condition any kind a smoker if you were a smoker in the past that would be a pre-existing condition any of those kinds of things. You've got to be careful. I heard being Democrat is a pre-existing condition as well as owning tutors and eating chips in your mom's basement. Yep, eating the chips. Little Treasury Jewelers, hi folks, had an equipment problem, so we'll just join the chat. There you go. There were some folks asking about some watches earlier, uh, but that is what it is. Yeah, when you're doing Skype, what you want to do is you want to just make sure that you can get the audio from the Skype call into those head headphones. And so you want Skype set up to get the audio from you to me and from me to you. And then all other audio needs to be off. So that's how that works. Carlos is in the house, and Tim says, so what you're saying is that you could put uh, so what you're saying is that you could put run that you could put run this virus not sure what that means you mean outrun that's possible too uh, and Dur says welcome back Steve and Peter says hey Steve and pneumonia death have drastically fallen off by 85% interesting I'm not sure what that means uh, let's see. How overweight are we talking, Craig? <laughs> Paul Pluta fat or Rosie O'Donnell fat? Yeah, I think I think you know I think it's a problem. Uh, you know, if you're significantly overweight, you got to be careful. I mean, this is definitely I think a, a pre-existing condition. Triforce Rich, my dad is obese with diabetes, but he says his doctor told him his numbers are good. I told him. You need a new doctor. <laughs> Got that right. 
Uh, Nick saying, hi, which is a better movement, high beat or spring drive? Nick in the house. I would go with spring drive. I think the spring drive is amazing. Uh, the high beat is a hell of a movement, too, but I think the spring drive is absolutely amazing. But I wouldn't say it would be a bad decision to go with either. I think the overall look and feel of the watch and the size, the thickness, all of these things you need to take into consideration for your use case. Craig, how often did you adjust the time on your mechanical watches to adjust for deviations? Michael in the house. What I would do is I would periodically, because I was fortunate in that my day date would run fast, so I would periodically just unscrew and pull out and stop it and and then, you know, restart it and I, maybe do that every two weeks or so. Mine was pretty accurate. Uh, in two weeks, it might be off by two or three seconds. This is about it, right? So mine was really, really good, you know, by any standard. Uh I, I got pretty lucky on that. So, yeah, that's what I would do. And that's why I like a watch that runs fast as opposed to a watch that runs slow. A watch that runs, runs slow, it's a pain in the neck to fix the time. It's a pain in the neck. What about wearing an Oris in a cheap apartment? There you go. Oris, absolutely. That could be a heavy use piece, I think. Let's see. Little Treasury Cam Link just died it looks like uh oh that's not a good thing that's not good for the cam link to be dead that's not a good thing okay peter's in the house the automatic speedmaster is not thick it's about 12.4 mils I, I, I guess oh okay that's good then it's not much thicker i think the the quartz one is about 12.2 so it's about the same it sounds like. Can we get confirmation on that? Independent confirmation from somebody who's measured them both, maybe? Nick Sang, Spring Drive. Okay. Was listening the the ID Guy channel earlier, and he was asked a GS question, admitted it was not his specialism, but guided listeners to look up Craig Ship. True story. Oh, good. That's good. That's, that was nice of him. Uh, let's see, Durr in the house, Craig, how many glasses of water do you drink in a day in that awesome American flag glass? Only maybe two. Only maybe two. That's about it. I don't over drink a ton of water. A ton of H2O. A lot of the food I drink has a high moisture content, so you don't have to drink as much H2O if you drink a lot of, eat like fruits, vegetables, things that are like, have a lot of high moisture content. So there's that. Uh, let's see. These people that like drink like 15 glasses of water a day and stuff, no, I don't think that's necessary. Thoughts on China. Buying stocks during the stock decline and becoming the largest shareholder in American companies. I don't know. I mean, maybe they're doing that. I, I don't know. I mean, they're not really doing that great themselves, so I don't know why, how they would be in a position to do that any more than anybody else. The way everybody's printing money around the world, I mean, there's plenty of money flying around to buy all kinds of things. So that's why I like something that's strictly limited in production, and that is Bitcoin. American flag glasses rocks. Okay, Lamont, J, J, uh, Jamat. Uh, okay, you mean, you mean the Tudor virus? Okay. I have a fairly small wrist, but need an accurate, large, and legible watch with loom. So I'm thinking of GS Spring Drive Diver put on a NATO. Well, what size is your wrist? Let's start there. What size is your wrist? Because the the problem is the GS Spring Drive Divers like this one, they're, they're a good size watch. I wouldn't recommend this watch for somebody with smaller than a 7 inch wrist. I would draw the line at 7 inches myself on that. I don't care what bracelet you put it on. Craig, have you seen real pictures of the SBGP015 yet? Is it looking as on the GS website or more shiny or I seem to find wrist shots. Okay, uh, let's try to pull that up. 
SBGP015. Oh, okay. So this is the watch, the limited edition watch that we saw. I think maybe we can find a video with it. Let's see if we can find a video. But let's, in the meantime, let's look at what the dimensions are on this puppy. Okay, so it's 40 mils by 12.2, 12.4 mils thick. So it's a reasonable size, reasonable size by, by any stretch. And that's a sport collection watch. So that's got, I believe, a screw down crown. It's got loom. That's a stunner. I think it's a stunner. Some people said they didn't like that, the blue bezel, but I think, I think it classifies as a stunner. Let me see if I can find a video of it. Give me a moment here. Find one of these YouTube tubes. YouTube tabs that I'm not really using anymore. Okay, this one I can use. Give me a second here. See if, see if we get lucky. Now this is a, a new model that just came out, so there might not be much on it. But uh, not getting a lot of luck here, folks. Not getting a lot of luck on it on YouTube. Let's see what this... Yeah, no, that's not going to show. No, I think it's just too new. I, I don't think you're going to get a lot on that watch. Let, let me see Let me see if I do an image search, if I get any good images. But I can tell you in person it's going to be stunning. It's going to be a stunner. Um, yeah, decent pictures on any of these watches are really hard to come by because they're just so new. I'm just looking at image search here, and it's just not, um, you know, there's just, just a real dearth of images on this puppy that are any good. I, if you like that case shape and that case design, I think it's going to be a stunner. I, I don't think you can go far wrong on that. And I can tell you one thing. I can, I can guarantee that thing is going to be short supply. I can guarantee it's not going to be an easy puppy to get your hands on. So, so yeah. Uh, let's see here. Um, Nick Zhang. Uh, Nick, Nick Zhang. That's not a bad choice. If you go with the titanium model, you won't have to worry about putting it on a NATO. It's super light. Okay. Craig, have you seen real picture? Okay, you, we already went through that. I have an NRA glass just to tease some friends when they come. Okay. Um, they're evil geniuses. Um, Lamont Jackson, I t think Covoid is Chinese, translates to tutor. <laughs> Uh, Craig, did you already sold that day date? I'm because yes, I sold it a long time ago. <laughs> You're not keeping up. You're not keeping up. Yes, sold it. But they're around. They're around. You can find them. Just try to find a real nice one, real nice condition. They're around. Edit my previous edit of my previous deleted comment. I want to belly dance with Brianna all night long. <laughs> I guess you do. Yeah, I guess you do. Um, good luck with that. Your first thing you better do is become a Patreon. You know, go go and sign up as a Patreon, at least at the $25 level. That would be a good start. And the second step, I would say, to get your foot in the door a little bit is buy her a watch. She's been talking about wanting a watch, so buy her a nice um, ladies Rolex, something like that, something nice. 
um, and you might be able to be, you know, headed the right direction at least. But yeah, I mean, if you're a cheapskate, then you're not going to get anywhere with a, a classy young lady like Brienne. I can tell you that right now. Uh, that's just not gonna, not gonna happen. Uh, Craig, we need to get custom Craig Ship American flag glass cups as merchandise on the page. There you go. Carlos, the other day I purchased a, a Trumpy bear after watching an online ad. Seems fun. Uh, the crown guards on that GMT Seiko are awesome. Okay. Um, let's see. Next thing. If the GS divers are too big for you, take a look at the Omega Seamaster. Steve also has deals in Omega watches as well. It's a slightly smaller and thinner and an amazing watch. Absolutely. Absolutely look at the Omegas. And Steve will give you a deal. This is the time to buy. And yeah, this is the time to to make deals, folks. I got eight GS. I got eight GS in the bank. I'm getting twelve hundred from Uncle Sam's. Plus, my dad will borrow me one extra. I got you nine G for that gold watch. Lamont is a little slow on the uptake. <laughs> He's a little slow on the uptake. He doesn't realize the watch was sold like, what, a year ago? He's a little bit slow on the uptake. Nick's in the house. Um, I really want a spring drive, though, okay? Uh, yeah, I don't blame you. There's some, there's some spring drives that are manageable size, but not in a diver, unfortunately. G-Town says, hey, Craig, uh, let's see. Peter uh, is in the house. Craig, I just measured my Omega Seamaster automatic, and it's 11.8 mils thick. It's the bomb watch from the end of the 90s. Wow. Cool. That is fantastic. And the SBGP015, not out to us yet. Okay. Do you have a uh, Seamaster, Steve, for this gentleman that wants a diver that's not too thick and not too big? Agreed. Think it's a stunner. I'm seriously interested in it. My AD does not have it yet, though. Well, your AD needs to be Steve. <clears throat> you need to buy from Steve. Uh, let's see. He don't. He he don't got it. <laughs> also, to own a day date, you must at least have a hundred k in the bank. <laughs> there you go. Um, hard pass on that blue bezel. That Kevin in the house. Nick Zang, I don't blame you if you have tiny wrists. Um, you can't pull off the divers. Check out the Snowflake and other spring drive models. They do make smaller spring drive pieces, just not divers. Yeah, I think he wants something more legible. Steve can probably hook you up with something. I think he's got some other divers, too, that are smaller uh, in other brands. He's the expert. He's got a lot of watches. I would talk to him. Talk to him. Do a video chat with Steve. See what you can figure out. I ain't at work right now, but when I get back, I get to 100K. My dad ain't charging me rent. There you go. He's in the basement apartment down there eating chips. Chips and dip. He's got probably got the short arms going on. That's okay. That'll work. View serve is in the house. What the hell is that blue bezel made of? It's a good question. We're taking orders on our website now. There you go. Wow. Okay. My guess is that is ceramic. Durr is in the house. The bezel is ceramic, says Little Treasure Jewelers. Triforce Rich says Browser. Bowser, it's ceramic. I still find it funny how many people don't know what your avatar is, okay. Uh, is the Grand Seiko Snowflake one of your top tier watches? I'm not very familiar with Grand Seiko, so I don't know much about their lineup. It's probably their most popular watch. It's fantastic. It's a fantastic all-arounder being titanium. It's amazingly comfortable. It has a gorgeous dial. Uh, let's, let's, let's find the Snowflake. I, do, I know I can find a good video of the Snowflake. I know that's doable. Let's see if we can do it right now. Okay, give me a second here. 
try to find the snowflake. Oh, actually, I've got one on my channel. What the heck am I looking for somebody else's? Let me let me find one on my channel. Give me a second here. Snowflake. The snowflake. By the way, you can search my channel. You can search my channel and you will be able to find this. And as you so all here's, know, I, I guess am a this Grand is an Seiko unboxing. fan. Okay, so let I've me had skip forward. A notebook you guys don't want to see the unboxing. Uh, this is skip not a, a brand bit. new watch. This is on my channel. Uh, these can be purchased used. And it's in excellent condition. This is and the first I wanted to, to review this got. watch just because and then I got another one in relatively the, short order. These the Grand Seiko and that a lot of people think so of when they snowflake. think of Grand Seiko. They that's think of the snowflake because it's just a uh, absolutely snowflake. gorgeous, extremely versatile watch. It's, it's a stunner. It's I think the perfect so, size yeah, and for that's an not everyday the greatest all around that was watch. A little bit underexposed. If you want, uh, I have to say so myself. Let me see if I can find something. Oh, let's get out in the daylight here. Give me a second. My full review will be coming. There we go. But this is just I couldn't wait to get some video clips up of this watch because it really is in person it's an amazing watch I've watched a lot of videos of this watch but this is the first time I've really studied design. one in person when I bought my Grand Seiko Diver out at Little Treasure Jewelers stunner. I Let did look that. at yeah. one briefly yeah that is a stunner absolute stunner somebody says well why did you sell it no, no i can't keep everything folks i can't keep everything around I, this is not the way we're going to do but yes i highly recommend it is a top tier piece stefan's in the house thanks to the little treasure jewelers have to be a bit patient then craig did you show the logo i made for you to steve yes i did kyle <laughs> he got a laugh out of that yes i did show him that that's funny there's in the house tim yes the snowflake is GS like the Submariner or Date 8 to Rolex. It's the Grand Seiko icon and what they are known for. If you only get one GS, the Snowflake is the watch to get, especially if you want an all-arounder that you can just wear all the time. That's a heavy-use watch. It's titanium. That's the same grade 5 titanium that this is. Really tough stuff. And just feather light on the wrist. Just super comfortable. Yes, you can't go wrong with a Snowflake. Trifor Triforce Rich Back in the 60s, Steve's heyday, they compared him uh, to a cross between James Bond, Clint Eastwood, and Captain Kirk. They have wised up since then and realized there is no comparison. There you go. That's right. Absolutely. I'm not kidding you. Uh, merch with that logo will sell Kyle in the house. Kyle, you got to do it. You contact one of these companies. You become the official merch distributor for for this channel and get some merch set up get set up a little website and we'll we'll drive traffic to it and you can make some money selling some official cs merchandise uh you serve uh, some say steve invented the spring drive and gave away the patent to seiko there you go um kyle jet yes he did i told him not to pr not to provoke the lion <laughs> Yeah, um, there you go. Uh, let's see. And Kyle Jett, nice, LOL. And Steve helped free Japan from the emperor's tyranny, so might be possible, Bowser. There you go. I really believe that if GS would release a small diver, it would be a hit. Oh, I know it would be. Absolutely it would be. A lot of people have been asking for it. You can only keep praying. There you go. And the Sturfel, uh, thanks. Uh, that's what I thought. It's the only GS I've heard of. Tim in the house. Um, Durr says, I honestly think that the current Omega Seamaster is probably the best bargain diver out there today. What you get for the money is unreal quality, history, and phenomenal peace. Yeah, and I think Steve might have one in, in stock. I think Steve might have one in stock. Well, maybe he'll let us know in the chat. We do check our website blog section. Chris, one of our associates just put up a video on our Seamasters. 
There you go. Craig, what is the favorite DuPont pen that you've owned? I like this one. I don't know what they call it. Uh, I'll give you a close-up of it. There's a video on my channel showing it, but I like this one. And you can find these on uh, from time to time on eBay at pretty decent prices. I have another one that is, it's called Vermeil. It's a, it's a 925 sterling silver, and it's got a heavy gold plate on it. And it's, a, a tr uh, it's more trim. I, I carried that one for a long time. Let, let me grab it real quick. Give me a second. <coughs> And uh, this one, this one is very elegant, very, very nice. Bought this one in the late 70s, about 78, 79. Uh, bought it new from a, a dealer, a DuPont dealer. And it's, it's very interesting. It's 925 sterling silver, but with a heavy gold plate over it. They called it Vermeil, I think. So let me show you a closer shot of that. And it absolutely uh, matches like a gold date eight. I'll tell you it does. And so does this one. This one matches anything in 18 karat yellow gold very nicely. Both of these match 18 karat yellow gold. So they're, they, they would go very nicely with a gold stunner dress watch. Just saying. So yes, I highly would rec highly recommend a DuPont pen. Let's see, uh, let's see, uh, DuPont just answered that. Okay, Tim, yes, you, ca you can't go wrong with any GS, but if you have the goal in mind to collect the icons, the snowflake is what to get. It's easily the most recognizable GS watch, and it's amazing in every respect during the house. My avatar makes me laugh every time I see it, and there you go. Uh, Steve, I watched Chris's video earlier. I got an email, and he did a great job. Okay, there you go. Uh, let's see. When did you get... You should put it up on this channel, Steve. Put the video up on the channel here so, so subscribers can see it. Kevin D., when did you get rid of your snowflake mine? I don't... A year ago? Year, I don't remember. I... I, I just time flies. I don't remember, but I did videos about it. Check out, check, search Snowflake on the channel. Here. You'll find a bunch of videos about that. Um, same problem I had. It was kind of like an in-betweener watch. I had a dress watch at the time, and I had this sport watch, and the Snowflake was kind of like in between the two, and so I, I, I just wasn't wearing it that much. And so then I had the opportunity to get the 005 stunner, which is the the benefit there is if I'm if it's off wrist for a week, it doesn't matter because it just keeps running, right? I could just grab it and go. Whereas the snowflake, the same old problem with the date eight, right? If it stopped, I'd have to get it started again and go through all that. So it just became kind of a surplus watch. And as you know here, surplus watches do not stick around. If I'm not using a watch, it doesn't stick around. So, unfortunately, it is gone. Um, let's see. Now, if I wanted a one-and-done watch to just wear all the time, Snowflake would be pretty high on the list as a possible solution for that. Be very high on the list. Uh, let's see. Steve, what's your favorite malt whiskey? Just curious. Uh, let's see. They shouldn't have given you a hat 
they should have given you a hat and a lapel pin, Craig. I do have a, a Grand Seiko hat. I did get a hat. I do have that. I don't wear ball caps, though. I'll bring it to ne the next time Steve has an event. I'll try to remember to bring it, and we'll use it as a giveaway item because it's in mint condition. I haven't used it for anything. Uh, let's see. Peter's in the house. I, I mean, David Williams in the house. He says that Peter car curious to know as well. Adur agreed. The snowflake is the way to go. May take a while to build up my collection. Tim in the house. GS Diver, Snowflake, Day Date. That combo can't be beat, Kyle. It would be hard to keep the Day Date going, though. With that kind of rotation, it would be hard to keep the Day Date going. It would be a real challenge. And I don't believe in watch winders. Just don't believe in watch winders. Not going there. Kevin D in the house. A Snowflake on a strap. Yeah, they're awesome, too. The Mighty Rat can't buy... Snowflake on Little Treasury website says contact for availability. Well, you better call Steve direct. Call the man. You know the man. You've got connections. Call the man. He's probably got one set aside with your name on it. Peter's in the house. David, what's yours? Uh, Glenn Levitt, maybe. Dur, Tim, yes. Collect collections all start somewhere. I think Steve also does financing, if that's of interest, but it's a uh, Watch worth having, and if buying, buy from Steve. There you go, no doubt. Kyle's in the house. I already have the people in place that create the gear for our hotel. I will get on it when they open back up. There you go, excellent. You've got the exclusive rights to distribute. Durr's in the house, the Mighty Rat. It's a hot watch and not always in stock. They sell like pancakes. So it's probably difficult to keep putting them in the site as fast as they sell. Contacting Steve is always the best. Yes, always get in direct contact with Steve. Nick's in the house. Uh, my mom bought her and my dad a pair of Omegas, and i always obsessed with them. I will check Omega out, Nick. Yes, talk to Steve. He's an Omega AD. He's an Omega authorized dealer. You get one with box and papers with your name on the paperwork. I think that's a way to go. Durr's in the house. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, but I've learned to jump with my pawn shop. Okay, all right. Uh, Durr, uh, to me, yes, yeah, that's okay. Take your time. It's not a race. Uh, there are currently three, okay. Oh, we're talking about liquor, I guess, there. I guess that's what we're talking about. Mighty Rat. We are not allowed to put the Grand Seikos in the shopping cart. Just give us a call or text us from the website app, and we'll hook you up with one or more. There you go. He'll give you special treatment. And Peter says, Craig, what do you think about Mont Blanc fountain pens? I'm not a fan of fountain pens. I just never went there, and I mean... You could get DuPont fountain pens as well. I have a Mont Blanc pen, ballpoint pen, that I like. It's okay. My first pick, of course, would be a, a DuPont, like this one or like the one that I showed earlier. I mean, that would be my first pick. That's why it's in my pocket. Obviously, I can get any pen that I want, right? And that's in my pocket, so obviously that's my choice, right? Um, let's see... Omega's outstanding. If you're a collector and like to have watches, you must have one in your collection. There you go, Dirt, for sure. That's what my dad says. School is everything. Got to make money work for me. Oh, that's great. Um, you have good taste. Uh, was that a Swiss Army knife? Um, I have a Swiss Army knife. I, I showed you yesterday. Was it yesterday that I showed the scientist? And here's a custom scientist model that my friend gave me the other day that somebody put custom scales on and uh, the scientist model Victorian ox knife is absolutely fantastic and very hard to find there's one on eBay now for 200 and some odd dollars new in the box so that's the deal there um, was that Swiss okay uh, Mr. Ship would you rather have immortality or a billion dollars well, of course, immorta Im Im immortality. <laughs> I mean, 
anybody that says they wouldn't want to live forever is like, I think they're delusional. And I don't, I have no need for a billion dollars. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't want for much. I'm fine. I, I don't have, you know, huge desires. So I'm good with all that. But yeah, living forever, that, that would, um, that would be good. I could continue to help people forever. That's what I do for a living, basically, is help people. So I could continue to do that. That would be a good thing. Let's see here. <clears throat> Confucius, 551 BC. If you have immortality, you're bound to get a billion dollars as time continues. <laughs> Easy answer. A uh, little treasury. And hey, at the rate they're printing dollars, a billion dollars is going to be pretty worthless anyway. So there you go. Um, little treasure jewelers, may I ask you a question off show? You can ask him any kind of question. I would call Steve and chat with him. Absolutely, I would do that. Uh, let's see. Craig, would you accept a free tutor hat? <laughs> I don't know what I would do with it. But yeah, if somebody wanted to send me a Tudor hat, I mean, I would take it to maybe Steve's show and maybe there'd be a Tudor fanatic that would want it. I mean, what can I say? Uh, speaking of watch winders, jewelry from the time teller wouldn't accept that watch winders add wear to your watch. I've literally talked to mul multiple watchmakers who have said otherwise. Well, my gosh, yes, it would cause wear and tear. Yeah, of course it would. I don't think it's a good idea. Thank you, uh, Little Treasure Jeweler Steve. Uh, time teller is the dumb teller. Uh, Jory is a noob and... Okay. Uh, let's see. And he has the dumbest lines. Uh, would you honestly ever think that he invented time? I mean, what a dork. Okay. Steve should start carrying Swiss Army knives as well. They're in the house. Uh, and he put his phone number in the chat for people that want to contact him. Absolutely. Do you serve? Uh, do you see he opened up an online vintage watch shop? He sells the most obscure <laughs> garbage with worse markups than Theo and Harris. Okay. Does Steve have winger? That's a good question. I don't think he sells Swiss Army knives. Craig, what do you think? I don't, you know, I really wish that Victorinox would have reissued The Scientist because it's very popular. It, they, they sell for premiums used, big premiums. So I, I wish they would have just brought that back out. It really is the best EDC uh, Swiss Army knife that they ever made. It's nice and trim, as you can see. It's got all the right tools that you need. Uh, now this one, the guy converted it, and he. This one does not have a corkscrew. The real real scientist has a corkscrew here. This one has the little scissors, so he did a little modification on this, right? But uh, but yeah, the scientist is amazing. Uh, let's see, and we're gonna wrap this puppy up here pretty soon, folks. So put any questions you have in the chat. I'm. Uh, I'm a rugged kind of chick. I'm not one of those girly girl prisses. There you go. So Megan wants a heavy use watch too. Absolutely. I don't blame her. Get something that can take some abuse because we're going into uncharted territory here, folks. So this, these are kind of wild times. You need a watch that can take a licking and keep on ticking, right? Craig, can you pull up the Tudor Monte Carlo and give your opinion? <laughs> All right, let's try that real quick. <clears throat> okay, so, um, hmm. See, I see a bunch of different ones here at different prices. I, I'm guessing that it's a chronograph tutor. I'm guessing that's one. But then it says tutor heritage. Uh, 
So I'm wondering if that's it. Uh, let me see here. Oh boy. Okay. Um, why is it all blown up like that? Let's see. Okay. I mean, it's not. I, I wouldn't call it an ugly watch. At least it doesn't have the ugly hour hand that a lot of tutors have. It's got a pretty decent set of hands on it. I'm not a big chronograph fan, period. So it wouldn't be for me, and it's very busy looking. But as far as tutors go, it's probably one of the better looking tutors that I've seen. But yeah, I would totally pass on it. Wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't be something that I would wear. Uh, let's see. Craig, would you accept a billion Zimbabwe dollars. <laughs> yeah. No, that would not happen. Uh, a free tutor hat would come in handy with the shortage of toilet paper these days. Uh, is Steve from Little Treasury in the house? He was earlier. He was. Yeah, he's saying down in the chat that he is still here. And Megan, then get a Grand Seiko or an Omega. Absolutely. I don't know about this group, but I'm getting outdoors and hiking. Who needs TP? Ha, ha, my girlfriend and I just use the streams and lakes we hike at. Absolutely, and I've got a bidet. So if you've got a bidet, you don't need toilet paper either, really. I don't understand the whole toilet paper thing, the, the panic, the toilet paper panic. It's pretty bizarre. People in general, a lot of people are a little bit bizarre if you if you take a close look at it. And, Craig, what do you think of the Omega Railmaster? I think some of them are pretty cool. I think some of them are pretty cool. Absolutely. Uh, that could almost buy you a stick of gum. Megan sounds like you need a G-Shock with that type of activity. Steve sells those as well. Yes, he sells G-Shocks. Absolutely. Those can take a beating. And Peter's in the house. Um, and uh, Steve is here says the little treasury icon uh, I hate the 12 hour bezel okay I hear you yeah I would pass on it too Tim's in the house if if still here Steve do you have available the Seiko Prospect LX watches in stock Durs in the house Breitling just released a chronograph that looks identical to that Tudor okay all right, I think we're going to about wrap this puppy up. We've been going more than an hour, folks. More than an hour. We've been going at it. Going at it. Hopefully, we can get Steve in here on one of these broadcasts coming up, and hopefully he can actually sell some, show some watches. Uh, almost said sell some watches. Well, maybe both. Maybe show some watches and sell some watches. Maybe that would be cool. So, in the meantime... We're going to wrap this puppy up. i got to reconnect. Let's do a check on the time. Oh, here's my, my Apple credit card, my super cool titanium Apple credit card that I have yet to use. I've got to try that out sometime. Let's see. Uh, we can't end now. We've got 38 viewers. Uh, just get into nature, guys. I'm breathing fresh air and loving every day. I just hop online when I hike into town to get supplies. Megan in the house, I don't blame you. I go for walks usually from between two and three hours a day. I'm, I'm out taking a nice long walk, and I've got beautiful hiking trails here and got the mountain right here. Uh, so got great places to take long walks, and uh, I do take advantage of that, absolutely. It, it now more than ever it, you got to keep in great shape you got to really take care of yourself it's super important that you eat right exercise get plenty of rest um, and uh, Steve says unfortunately not looks like Seiko is not sure the DMV customers need any well hopefully you'll be getting some get on the list get on the list so that he can let you know when he gets what you want uh, have a good weekend everybody what's the scoop on the Apple credit card it's super cool you you should get one they're free and they're titanium and they are super super cool now I've never used mine so I can't speak to using it but they're super cool looking they got no numbers on them at all no numbers at all on them uh, they're just super, super cool. <laughs> Hear that? <laughs> Solid titanium. 
not a bad deal and it's absolutely free so that's the scoop dir I would get one do not pass go but you have to have an iPhone you have to have an iPhone and I seem to remember maybe do you have a tutor I mean do you have a Android phone uh, is it credit through Apple no it's through um, Goldman Sachs is the issuer it's a MasterCard basically but it's a really cool one really cool but you do have to have an iPhone so is it connected to your bank account no not so far as I know I don't think so all right go ahead and get one they're free that's my tip of the day and let's wrap this puppy up Craig your favorite shirt for hiking on those humid Maryland summer days uh, you I would wear something like I have on I'd wear a safari shirt because you also want protection you know from the thicket and things like that and and maybe even mosquito bites and stuff like that these you can roll the sleeves down and button them and this and the cu the cuff is fairly tight so the mosquitoes can't get up in there and attack you and stuff and wear this with a nice hat uh, and uh, yeah I think even on a hot day you can wear a safari shirt that's that's doable you want protection you want protection when you're out and about you never know what might happen it could get a little dicey out there could get a little dicey uh, let's see I have an iPhone 11 Pro Max there you go you can get a absolutely then you can get a Apple credit card yes you can daylight savings ended here last night in Melbourne okay are there rewards for the card yes yes check it out yes there are bedtime here see you next time all right we're gonna we're gonna let let everything wrap up there's another time check hey click subscribe click the little bell and we will see you next time